Good morning, amen. We have some announcements. Amen. I want to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., every Sunday evening at 6. Also, we have our midweek service every every Wednesday at 7. I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Come see what God has for your life. Amen. amen. Sunday to Sunday is a long time. Amen. Uh, so you know what? Uh, you trust God. You come. You come hear the word of God. Amen. We're going through the Bible right now. Amen. Uh, on Sunday evenings and on Sunday on our Wednesdays. Amen. You know what's going to it. We're having a good time. Uh, and you know what? Just uh, I want to encourage you to be a part of that. And, uh, and come see what God has for you. Don't forget, you can always join us. Uh, man, uh, faithfully on YouTube, Facebook. Amen. We're, we're always there, amen, let people know about Jesus, amen. <clears throat> want to remind you, amen, on uh, March 19th and 20, uh, Mar March 19th through the 21st, amen, we're going to have a three-day revival in the city of Rosarito, Mexico, amen, out in Baja, and want to encourage you, amen, if you can make it out there to come to come along, amen. Um, if not, support us on, on uh, Facebook and YouTube, uh, as we'll be uh, broadcasting live from down there. So you allow God, amen, uh, uh, to, to touch you, amen, and see what God's doing, amen, as we begin to go into other, other countries, other nations, amen. Amen. These are all the announcements, amen. We're going to lift up an offering, amen. So let's worship God, amen, as we worship God. Amen. This morning, amen, you give with an open heart, amen. You trust in God, amen. Let's bow our hearts, amen, as we uh -uh. trust from the God. Uh -uh. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, once again for the opportunity to gather in your house and be fed, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, that your hand be upon your people, Father God, Lord, upon their finances, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, these are willing hearts giving righteously back what belongs to you, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, we ask that you continue to bless the church and your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him and at the door. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I'm going to preach on desire. Amen. As, as humans, we have a lot of desire. Desire comes not because you're a Christian, but desire comes because you breathe. It's something that we all have. Some desires, some desires go beyond ourselves. Some desires only include ourselves. Nonetheless, we all have a desire. Even those who are blessed beyond <laughs> comprehension. You ever know or hear of somebody who has so much money? That it blows your mind. You're like, how in the heck would you ever, what can you do with all that money? And you say, uh, well, I don't know, but uh, I'll, I will have fun figuring it out. <laughs> That's desire, amen. There's those, amen, who have no money, who have no nothing going on in their lives. And, 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 and they're in their darkest moment of life. And their desire can currently be to take their last breath. Some desire for marriages to be restored. Some desires for kids to go to college. Some desire, amen, for peace in life. Some desire for financial blessing. But make no mistake, we all have a desire today. There's a desire that builds up within us that, 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 that keeps us uh, uh, looking forward to the next step. Uh, even those who are, who are looking, for, looking towards ending their life, they're still looking towards that day. They're looking for something. There's a desire that sins. The problem with desire isn't that we're not capable of it. It's that sometimes we'll allow our desire to mislead us or misguide us and take us down wrong paths. Sometimes we allow desire for the wrong things to take us out of the will of God. So this morning, I want to talk about having a desire to do the will of God. 
Because that's what we need this morning. We need to do the will of God. Yeah. We've done a lot of things with our lives. We've done a lot of things that, that, that has derailed us from God's calling. And we can use uh, many excuses for it. But we, the reality is, is when we derail ourselves from the calling of God and from what God wants to do in our lives, we have no one to point fingers at but ourselves. See, the word desire is defined as to long or hope for. To long or to hope for. To express a wish for. The conscious impulse towards something that promises enjoyment or satisfaction in its attainment. Something that brings enjoyment and satisfaction when you get it. Yes. That's desire. Mm -hmm. It's also a, a, usually a formal request or petition for, for some action. And that's and that's and that's key. That's what I want to focus on today. Is that a desire is usually a formal request or a petition for some action. So when you desire something, you want something to happen, you want something to take place, you want something to change, you want you want you want a move of some sort. For some, amen, uh, the move that you want is a self is a, is, is a self move. It's where you do you do something. But for others, amen, the move is something that we need for something for someone else to do for us. Or, in one in our case, uh, the desire is for God to move on our behalf. I mean, want God to move on your behalf. Yes, amen. I want God to move for me. Yes. I want the God go. I want God to go before me. I want Him to move for me, and I want Him to do everything for me. But in order for that desire to happen, uh, and for that desire to be fulfilled, uh, it's going to take action. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do something. The desire is a feeling that will drive a person to greatness. It is something that when guided with the right intention can bring hope, it can bring wealth, and it can bring life. To have a godly desire is rare today. Yeah. Now, coming to church isn't always rare. But to have a godly desire is mm -hmm. in, today's, in today's society. <clears throat> We're currently uh, uh, live in a time where there's a generation being grown up right now that, that are in adulthood that believe everything belongs to them. Yeah. They're entitled. And we look at our children and we say, how did you become so entitled that, that everything you believe in needs to be handed to you on a silver plate? We said, why do you act like that? And they're our own children. Mm -hmm. But I hate, I hate to rain on your parade. Uh, uh, part of the reason why they think that way is because of the way we raised them. That's right. Mm -hmm. We raised them. Yes. We all have that same desire to give our children better than what we have. We have a desire that, that their education is better than our education. We have a desire that, that their, their finances is better than our finances. We have a desire, amen, that our grandchildren are raised in a better manner in which we were raised. But when we see, amen, the things going on, and, and, and how do they become so entitled, we got to look back and say, what did I do? We're living in a time where the generation before me would smack me on the head to get it right. Mm -hmm. And we try to pass that down. We try to pop, hit our kid, get it right. 
but it eased up. We didn't we didn't beat our kids the way our kids when we got beat. We just didn't do it. So guess what? They don't beat their kids the way you beat them. So it eases up. And then guess what? Their kids don't beat their kids the way I'm not saying go beat your kids. The Bible says we be started with the Bible says about children. <laughs> My Bible says beat your child with a rod and deliver their soul from hell. Amen. But it lightens up as generation goes by. Every generation we want our children to get bigger, get better than what we were. And that's the generation we live in. We live in a time where everybody gets a trophy. Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody. Win or lose, you get a trophy. I remember growing up, only first and second place would get a trophy. Actually, in a lot of leagues, little leagues and stuff like that, it was first place got a trophy. Yes. Second place got a ribbon. Right. And third place did too if they were lucky. Mm -hmm. That's it. And the rest of them, <laughs> Come on. try harder next year. <laughs> People trained and worked harder to get on those better teams. Mm -hmm. So we're called to be men and women of faith and believe all that we have is ordained by God. So we need to understand that. There's nothing that you have that God hasn't placed there for you. Nothing. You say, but, but, but what are you talking about? My money? My house? No, nothing. Nothing you have. That means your blessings and even those things that you call curses mm -hmm. have been ordained by God to strengthen you. That's right. To bring you to another place, to the forefront, to making you a better man, a better woman of God. But how can these pains in my body make me a better person? Well, we need to get closer to God to find that out. That's right. Come on. How, 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 can, how can my broken uh, uh, marriage or, or broken family uh, uh, be ordained by God? Well, maybe God wants to get it back together, make you work for See, everything that goes on is ordained by God. But the problem is, is that when we define desire, we forget that it is usually a formal request or a petition for action. So you have a desire for God. And the desire does... Does, does a lot of good to have that desire, the will, the, 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 the calling of God. All that, all that is great. But if we do nothing with it, it's for nothing. It's for nothing. Mm -hmm. Man, I love God so much that I'm going to sit in my room and do nothing. See, this is not always an easy thing to accomplish. We look at the millennial generation I don't even know what the next generation after them that are coming up now. I don't even know what they're called, but it's just falling apart it's as this. we go along. It's this. It, it just it just falls falls in. Generation Generation X. Generation not Generation X. It can't be their Y or Z. Z. I think we were Generation X. Uh -huh. No, uh, whatever they are. <laughs> they're Generation Pop. <laughs> <laughs> But, the but in our generation, that's what the people above <laughs> us were saying. And in that generation, that's what people above them were saying. And it just travels down. But we can't blame them. I can't blame the millennials mm -hmm. for not having a desire to serve God. It's my choice. Can't blame the millennials or generation pop for not fulfilling the will of God in my life. I can't blame them for COVID. I can't blame them for death. I can't even blame them for life. I can't blame them for anything. Because when it comes down to the desire that is given into me, 
the drive to do something for God, it is up to me on whether or not I'm going to fulfill God's will in my life. So I want to read out of the book of James, verse 1, chapter 19, I mean, verse, chapter 1, verse 19. Book of James. The Bible says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul but be doers of the word but be doers of the word but be doers of the word my bible stutters <laughs> That not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. That, that is such a powerful, powerful scripture. That last portion. Not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. You imagine that? When you hear the word of God and do nothing about it, but you justified it in your own head, all you did is lie to yourself. And you believe your own lie. Deceiving yourself. Verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Don't even recognize himself anymore. But he who looks into, into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a, but a doer of the work not of the word, of the work, is one, is this one will be blessed in what he does. And I pray God you bless your word. Just name. Amen. To fulfill a godly desire requires action. <clears throat> a person cannot have a desire to do something for God and still do nothing. You, 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 you can't have a desire for God and say, God, uh, I, want, I, want, I want you to use my life. I'm going to do something. I want, and, and, and then stay at home and do nothing. Well, I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm a believer. And, and that's, the, that's the popular thing. Believer. I'm a believer. And I believe you're doing nothing right. but sitting and watching. And watching church go by you. Because we're in a pandemic and I can't do anything. And what happens is, is we're no longer a, a, a doer of the word, but we become believers only, believing in our own thoughts. The Bible says uh, that it's like a natural man looking into his face in the mirror, and then as he walks away, he doesn't recognize the person that he just saw. Because he, he, he's done nothing but deceive himself. So what happens is, is, is we begin uh, to, to fall away from God's desire in our heart uh, that he has implanted in us uh, and the things that he has called us to do and what we've done is we remove ourselves from the will of God. Yes. See, a person cannot have a desire to do something for God <laughs> and expect it to be fulfilled while doing nothing. Come on. I think if we're all honest with ourselves, there is something within us that we want to do for God. There's great things we want to do for God. That include helping other people and bringing salvation to others. And, and sometimes we feel that these things are, are beyond, oh, well, the, oh, the church I go to, they'll never go for that. But yet we never try it. I don't know, uh, Pastor Lorenzo, I had some, some, some ideas and at the end of all my ideas, he always says, well, do it. Let's do it. Because all we can do is try it. Right. <clears throat> if it doesn't work, well, hey, we, we, we at least tried it. Mm -hmm. If that turns out to be something that other ministries can, that, that can fulfill and we can't, well, at least we tried to do it, too. At least we tried and we gave it a shot. Yeah. A 
church is not a dictatorship. We're here, here to fulfill God's will in our life, the desires God has implanted. In James 21, we just read, it says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness. Come on. Get those dirty thoughts out. You know, and overflow wickedness. He says, get rid of, he says, therefore lay aside all that, get, get rid of those filthy thoughts and, and all that wickedness that goes into your head that keep you from fully fulfilling the desires of God in your life. And it says, and with, with meekness, so it means with a humble heart, with humility. It says, and with meekness, the implanted word, which is a, a able to save your soul. Just put away those thoughts of the things that, that you can no longer do. Well, I, I would do this for God, but I, I just can't because of this or, or because of that. And either we have all these excuses of why we can't do something. But there's a desire in our heart, and, they, and, it, and it convicts us, and it changes our, our mind on a lot of things because we want to do something for God. But then we, we battle with ourselves because we don't recognize the man in the mirror anymore. But, and the Bible says that unless we get up and do something, it's not going to happen. But, but he says... With meekness, with a humble heart, uh, uh, begin to, to do something. Receive the implanted word. The implanted word. The implanted word is, is, is to, is to a, a, a fixed idea, an attitude in someone's mind. To be implanted is to, is to insert embed, bury, lodge, place, install, induce. That's what being a plan is, is to do all these things to get it so deep within you into your soul, into the into the marrow of your bones where where, where your where your blood begins to flow that implanted word all throughout your body. What that what does that mean? It means that you're living the word of God. Yes, amen. So we talk the word of God. But we need the implanted word within us where we're living the word of God. To fulfill the desires of God in your heart and in your mind and what you know that you got to do for God, you got to have the implanted word within you. you got to have it flowing through your blood. you got to have it pumping through your heart. When the heart pumps blood, uh, and man, what it does, it, 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 throws, uh, it throws the blood uh, all through your body, including your mind. How important is to have the implanted word of God into your heart? Because that implanted word of God is an injection to your heart. Amen. It will flow its way through your mind and through your, through your brain. And why is that important? Because we need our minds to change. Yes, amen. I need God to change my mind this morning. Because I have ideas of what I think is right, but, but, but unless the, the ideas that come from God or ordained by God, that come from the implanted word of God, hey amen, then all they are is just a bunch of garbage. Mm -hmm. I need God in the center of my heart, hey amen, to pump. A few years ago, I had some issues. I thought I was having a heart attack. I went up at the hospital. And they did a... Uh, they did a... Uh, uh, I forget what it's called. EKG? No, for the, much more than that. I had to go in and they injected dye into my heart. Angio. Angio. And and they go in and they, they inject it into, into my bloodstream. And once it hits the heart, and it's an amazing thing. It just was amazing. Because you're awake for it and you see the screen. And you can see you can see your heart and everything and the veins and the flows that are, that are taking off. And once they inject it, he says you're gonna feel something warm. And they inject this dye, and it is warm. You literally feel you feel your veins warming up. And it goes in there and you can see it just begin to just spread instantly all through your body. Through all the all the blood vessels. It's the injected, the implanted word of God. That when it hits your heart, it's gonna spread about your it's gonna spread about your whole body. Sometimes in those in those in those tests, they find clogged arteries that's affecting the blood from flowing. And the doctor has to go in there and open up those arteries and place a little thing in there so the blood can begin to flow again. And it has to. 
Because if the blood isn't going to flow, amen, the heart will never pump correctly, and your mind will never think right, your body will never function correctly. And the same thing needs to happen with us when it comes to, to the Word of God. We need it to be injected into our hearts to where, where, the, the, where, where it begins to just flow, amen, and goes all the way up to our brains and down to the soles of our feet. This way, whenever there's a clogged vein, because we have our own thoughts and our own thought process, amen, <laughs> then we find the word of God can go in there and begin to heal that. Open up those arteries and begin to let it flow. Yes, come on. Have you ever seen somebody with faith so great you can practically feel it? <laughs> Where they speak and they have so much faith, you're like, I, I just, just give me a small portion of that. Mm -hmm. Just give Man, I, I've spoken to some great men of God. I've been blessed. And I hear them speak. I mean, like, Pastor Lorenzo, he's, he's a great man of God. Great faith. Mm -hmm. But he's my friend, but he's my pastor. Mm -hmm. and, and he's my friend because he's my pastor. And, and, and because he's my friend, I don't always tell him because, you know, we, we joke. <laughs> but when I hear him talk on faith, it's, it's so, as a matter of fact, like I spoke it and it's done. Mm -hmm. I say, God, give me some of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's certain men that have, that have come across in my life that I hear these, them speak and, and, and I needed some advice uh, about a week or so ago. So I called up another pastor. I called up Pastor Alex <laughs> Salcino. A man, a man of God that I've known since the mid 90s, that, I, that I've, I've known of since the mid 90s. And, 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 and I. And I and I called them in with, with meekness and humbleness. Hey, Pastor Alex, thank you very much for, for taking my call. I really appreciate your time. I don't want to take too much of your time, but you know what? God bless you, and, and, and look, at this is what it is. He sat and he listened, and he began to speak wisdom. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the wisdom. It was the faith built behind it yes. that pushed it into my heart. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now that, I can accept that. I've had the same conversation with Pastor Harry Garcia. Mm -hmm. When you hear the word, Pastor Jesse Gonzalez, and I hear the word, and they're in the, in the, the injected, amen. Even Pastor Henry Rivera in Wichita, he, who, when he comes down, he, amen, he'll call me out of nowhere and says, hey, where you at? I'm, 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 I'm at home. Where you at? You live in Wichita. No, I'm right down the street. Let's go eat. All right, let's go. <laughs> That's crazy. But he's the only pastor who ever showed up in Italy and just says, hey, I'm in the town. You guys want to preach? And I'm like, what the heck? What's going on here? Who does that? But, he, but he'll speak. And when you hear the words, you're like, oh, this, is, this is faith. Yes. But it's not faith spoken. It's proven faith from the life that has been given to God. By men and women who have given their lives to God and you hear Amen. The implanted word of God living through them, and you can not practically feel that faith. I've had people tell me that. Pastor, you know, how, do, how, do, how do I get the faith you have? And I keep it simple. I use, I use the scripture we put up on the screen. Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Yes. That's all I can tell you. There's no, there's no secret to it. There's no, there's no big revelation. It's follow Jesus and watch the faith build. Yes, amen. Follow Jesus. Get that implanted word of God and inject it into your heart and watch it blow, watch the watch it flow through your blood vessels and and, 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 and overtake your mind. But all I can say is, is imitate me just as I imitate Christ. See, it's a simple answer on how to get that kind of faith. It is a simple answer. But the path to get there is a journey. These men that I mentioned, amen, they, they, they didn't speak this and get me to feel this and get me to think this by them just saying, oh, I'm a Christian. No. Because when you speak to them, you, you can feel the, the, the years and the generational years speaking through their life, amen, of experience, of understanding what it takes to be a, uh, to be a man of God or to be a woman of God. So we cannot be the Christian generation that lives for God with an entitlement attitude. 
Well, God, you owe me. Yeah, I know you gave your son, but that wasn't good enough. You still owe me. We can't be that generation. The, the Christian generation that believes, uh, 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 you know what? Uh, I believe that I gave her the offering this morning and I should have a check in the mail this afternoon. Come on. We can't be that generation. We can't be the generation that says, well, I prayed on Tuesday for healing and, and it better be done before I, I get home. No. Well, you know what? I pray that God fills the church, that souls will be saved, but never handle on a flyer. Come on. I prayed for the backslider. I did that two weeks ago. I prayed for the backslider, and they haven't shown up yet. <laughs> Have you called them? Come on. Have you knocked on the door? Come on. Then look up the window. Oh, dang. It's Pastor. Did he see you? Yeah. Oh, man. Which well, I we didn't hear it. <laughs> He's calling now. <laughs> He's looking through the window. <laughs> I think he's going to the backyard now. <laughs> I'll find you. I don't give up. <laughs> I don't. I don't give up. I just don't give up. So we can't be that Christian generation that believes and have that attitude of entitlement where we believe that it all just belongs to us. It just belongs to me. And I, I like to say, God, it's there. <laughs> no. <clears throat> no. Even, even, even the prophets, amen. Elijah, as, as, as he's there, he's coming against the, the, the prophets of Baal, 450 prophets of Baal, and, 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 and as they're, they're there, and, and he, he cuts up the bulls, and he says, you know what, I'll cut up my bull, and we'll put it on the altar, you cut up yours, and he begins to mock them. And they got all their backers with them, and they're all the 450 prophets, and he's there by himself with the servant, and he's looking, and he's telling them, and he's going against them. And he begins to speak with faith in God. Show them that you are the true living God. Come on. And he begins to pour water upon his own uh, his own offering, and he soaks it. The Bible says that it's drenched, and, and there's a puddle all around it. And he begins to say it. It doesn't matter what man sees to be uh, impossible, but the God I serve is a, is the creator of all things, and through him all things are possible. And watch this, uh, you prophets of the false god. And he begins to pray, and God consumes it. Yes, come on. It took action. It took faith to stand there. He had to believe that, you know what, God would deliver him in this time because he knew that if God didn't deliver him, amen, the 450 other prophets of a false god would have came and killed him. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they were doing. Yep. He was one of the last prophets, amen, that was still alive after Jezebel went and had everybody killed. And, 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 and he's still alive, and he had to stand and with boldness, amen, and say, God, you are able to do this. Mm -hmm. That's right. Knowing that if it didn't happen, it was his life. He didn't say, I'm entitled, you have to do this. He said, God, show them who you are, that they may see that their eyes will be open." God has so much more for us. Our desires for God are only going to be accomplished by our attitude mm -hmm. and inserting and begging, injecting and rooting the word of God not just in our hearts where we cover where we cover with so much many of the cares that it gets so buried but by making the word of God and the will of God and our desires of God a part of our everyday life. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. In Colossians 3.23 the Bible says well, whatever you do do it heartily. It means do it with everything you have. Do it wholeheartedly. 
as to the Lord and not to men. See, we don't serve God to please people. You know what? There's, there's, I got I got people in my family, in my my my, my kids, my own children, my own children. <laughs> Who don't want to hear the word of God? Mm-hmm. They want to be a part of the word of God. Who who who, who get mad sometimes if we talk too, too much about the word of God? So do I do I back off because I don't want to offend them? Heck no. If they died and made it to make make it to hell, they're gonna be more offended that I never pushed so harder. Come on. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance Mm -hmm. for you serve the Lord Christ. Matthew 5, 6, it says, Jesus says, he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The word might is not in that scripture. We, we, we talk about the things of God uh, and, and we change scripture because of, and they might be filled and we, we, because we, we talk about it with lack of faith but, but but Jesus says no they shall be filled if you if you if you uh, if you search God you uh, if you search for God uh, and you seek God with with hunger and thirst and righteousness amen uh, and you're seeking God with everything you have you allow that the word of God to be injected into your heart. And overflow in your body, amen. If you do that, the Bible, Jesus says, uh, uh, you shall be filled. You will be filled. He yes. will fulfill you. Yes, amen. Not according to men. Not according to the world. Not according to what your neighbor thinks fulfillment is. But he will fill you. Come on. According to his word. Yes, amen. In Psalms 40, verse 8, it says, I delight to do thy will. Mm-hmm. I delight in it. I enjoy doing your will, God. It says, uh, oh my God, yeah. Thy law is in my heart. Mm-hmm. I desire, I love to do the will of God. I, it's a part of who I am. It is a natural thing to me. Right. It's a natural thing in my life. Last night, we're at my daughter's house. And some relatives aye, aye, aye. were there, friends, a friend of mine there, who didn't know the old relatives. And we began talking, just, you know, reminiscing on old time things that we used to do, that not as Christians. Uh-huh. And we were just laughing, you know, about the old things. And on the way home, my wife and I were talking about it, and we were just kind of laughing about the things, because, you know, a lot of the dumb things we used to do came up. <laughs> say thank God that those days are gone you know I don't regret them I mean they're, they're, they're part of they're part of our history of who, who we are what how it makes us to be the men and women of God that we are but thank God that we're on our way to heaven and when things come in front of us we say no I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing that I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to be a part of that I'm not why? Because getting you to heaven is more important than fulfilling the lust of my flesh. Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 20, 21. <coughs> Romans chapter 15, verse 20, 21 says, My aim is to evangelize. That's why this is why I love Paul so much. Listen to this. My aim is to evangelize where Christ has not been named. And he's talking about, I want to preach about Jesus to people who still haven't even heard his name. So that I will not build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who were not told about him will see. And those who have not heard will understand. Paul says that the desire is to preach the gospel somewhere that they have not heard the gospel. And and, and instantly, 
I, I think as we read the scripture, we says, Paul says, I want it. my desires to go somewhere where they've never heard the name of Jesus. And we begin to, to be transported, amen, into a place of a jungle or, or some third world country, amen, that's been under oppression. But yet, amen, there's people right outside of our own door who still don't know who Jesus is. Come on. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know that he was the Christ. They think he's just some fancy guy that you put on a picture on a wall. They think that all he did was eat because they had the last supper on the wall. <laughs> Jesus is a buffet guy. No, he's not. And Paul says, I want to take the gospel. I want to take the word of God, the implanted word of God, out of my heart and bring it to people who have not heard of the name of Jesus Christ. I've shared this before. I didn't know who Jesus was. I had to literally ask, who's this Jesus guy that you keep talking about, preacher? Mm -hmm. What is this Father, Son, Holy Spirit thing that I keep hearing about? I don't get it. I don't know what happened. And I remember, amen, the preacher looks at me and he thought I was messing with them. He thought I was being sarcastic, amen. So no, I'm serious. I don't know. Right. What, do you, what is this that you're talking about? Help me understand. Help me understand. We just read, amen, how, how the, the, the unit, amen, in the book of Acts, and he's sitting there on his chariot and he's reading the book of Isaiah. And Philip comes by and he sees him and he, and he talks to him and he says, do you understand what you're reading? And he goes, and the eunuch says, how can I understand unless somebody teaches me, unless somebody translates this for me, I can't understand it. Because my heart hasn't been built for this yet. I don't know how to open my heart to receive this word of God yet. I don't, my heart isn't opening up my mind. Is, the blood isn't pumping. The embedded word of God is not in my heart. Amen. To pump the blood through my brain to get me to understand this yet. How can I understand it unless somebody explains it to me? And Paul says uh, that my desire is to preach the gospel to people who have not even heard the name of Jesus yet. Paul said the same in order to fulfill the desire he has for God. I must go to the lost and preach the gospel. Not to those who already know the word, but to those who do not. Those who are still lost. See, Christians have this habit, and this isn't just this isn't just isolated to, to other churches, or those fellowships, and those people, and those churches. No, this comes into our churches, yes. to our Christians. <clears throat> There's even churches out there who want to take time to start plucking people who haven't been in church for a while. So, oh, they didn't go to their church. It's just tell them that, you know what, uh, if your church was godly, they'd be open. And bring them to our church. Mm -hmm. Thieves. We say, you know what? It's easy. It's easier for me to witness to somebody who already understands, and I can just bring them in, and they'll just come in and they'll just flow. They'll just thrive. No, they won't. It's already indoctrinated. They already have their idea. It's gonna take a while to get that to get that changed. It's gonna take a while for them to begin to understand, begin to flow, and things of like God. No, Paul says, I want to go somewhere where there's nobody that knows. I want to get a new person, a person who's not saved, who doesn't know about Jesus, doesn't understand salvation yet. Somebody that when they get saved, they're going to have such an appreciation for God that, that, that it's just going to overflow in them, that the Word of God's going to be so embedded in them that it's going to change their life. Yes. Amen. Change their life. Mm -hmm. Change it. It's a desire. What's your desire today? What do you desire from God today? What is your desire? See, God wants to do something in you. But more important, He wants to do something through you. Yes, that's right. He wants to use your life. He wants to embed the word of God into you. What is your desire today? I believe 
believe God wants to change the church from being, from being that entitled generation he wants to deliver us. And until we allow the word of God to be implanted, flow through our body, change our hearts, change our minds, we'll always be the millennial generation of Christians. So I'll leave you with this today. What is your desire to do for God? What are you desiring to do? Think about it. Let that settle. Let that sit in you. And go home with that. Because I believe God wants to do bigger things. Amen. So you know what? This morning, and then we're gonna we're gonna close. But uh, you know what? I wanna I wanna challenge you to begin to to allow the desire God has put into you, the will of God that He's put into you, the plan of God He's put into you, the calling of God He's put into you. I want to do. I want to challenge you to fulfill that. We are not the entitlement Christian church, amen? We're not all getting trophies. There's going to be a crown. But how will your crown look? Will God say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or will he just say, oh yeah, your name's every day. So find the will of God desire of God. And you know what? I want to encourage you, amen, to come out tonight. Come to the building if you're in the area. Those of you watching at home, come to the building if you're in the area. Come and hear the word of God. Come receive the word of God. We'll be here tonight at 6 o'clock, amen. And uh, I want to encourage you to be a part. Be a part of what we got going on. Remember, next week is time change. So I would encourage you to remember that. Amen. If not, you'll be an hour early to church. Praise the Lord. No, amen. You'll be an hour late. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so amen. That's all we have for this morning. Amen. So I want to thank you guys. So you know, let's bow our hearts as we close with prayer. Come on, Father, we thank you, God, this morning, God, for your word. We thank you, God. God, for giving us a desire to serve you, a desire to do your will, a desire, God to have you fulfill your plans in our lives, God. God, I pray, God, that you inject our hearts, God, with your word, God, that it overflows throughout our body, God, that we cannot sit still, God. God, that the conviction of doing something for you will be stronger than the will for us to sit down, God. But God, we thank you, God, for delivering us and helping us and giving us a, a vision, God, and giving us a future, God. God, bring those before us, God, who have not heard of your name, God, that we 